Hello everyone and welcome to a brand new series on Flask in Python. Now for those of you that aren't aware, Flask is a micro web framework for building websites with Python. It's actually typically used as kind of a back end and then another front end is connected to it using something called a RESTful API. But in this video, in this series, what we're going to do is just go through the basics of Flask, understand how to use it, how to make websites and how to quickly kind of do development on the web. If you're comparing this to something like Django, then you're going to notice quickly that a lot of things that happen in Flask are much more simple and make a lot more sense, especially if you're not an expert in Python or with Django and Flask itself. So this is more of a micro framework rather than a full fledged web framework. And that also means that it doesn't include a lot of the nice tools that come with Django, like user authentication and database connectivity and all of those kind of things. So I just want to give you guys a quick preface here. You guys will understand as we go through this and you'll see how quickly we can actually develop applications with Flask. All right, so let's actually go ahead and start building our first web page or website with Flask. Flask. You're going to notice this is going to go very quickly. And what I'm going to do is just kind of build out the page and then walk you through exactly how all of these different things actually operate. Although I'm sure most of you guys will be able to figure it out on your own. So what we're going to do is just start by creating some folder. Now I'm in my command prompt window here. We do need to actually get into this. So just open up CMD from wherever you're going to open that from. If you're on windows, if you're on Mac, you're going to go terminal Linux terminal as well. What we're going to start by doing, sorry, is actually installing flask. So we can install this with a very basic pip command, just pip install flask. If for some reason your pip isn't working, I do have a video. I'll try to leave a card to it. Someone remind me if I forget in one of the corners that kind of goes through how you can actually fix this and get it working. Another point here, I usually recommend that you install this in a virtual environment. Now you don't need to do this. And if you don't understand what this is, don't worry about it, but that's just good practice. So I figured I'd mention it. And next, you probably are going to want to put all your Python files for this specific website in their own folder. So I've just created one on my desktop or not desktop inside some directories called Flask tutorial. Then I've created one blank Python file here. I just called it tutorial one.py and now we're ready to go and start creating the web page. So the first thing we're going to do is actually just import flask from flask and I'll zoom in here. So what am I saying from flask from flask import flask. So from flask import flask. The next thing we're going to do is actually create an instance of a flask web application. Now to do this, we're going to say app equals flask. And then in here, we're just going to put underscore underscore main underscore underscore. Now what we're going to do is actually run this app. So I'll show you how to do that. We're going to say if I believe it's underscore underscore name underscore underscore equals underscore main underscore underscore then app dot run. Now this is pretty much all we need to do with the exception of one thing to actually start a website. So this is how easy it really is to create a new project and get a website running. Now what we're going to do is actually define the pages that will be on our website. So the first page that I'm going to create is a home page. Now to do this, you're going to make a function and this function is going to return what's going to be displayed on the page. So I'm going to define this as home. You can call this whatever you want, but usually I like to name my function something that represent what I'm actually going to be displaying. So in this case, the home page. And then from inside these functions, you're just going to return for our simple cases right now. And we'll get more advanced later with HTML files. We're going to return some inline HTML. Now, all that means is you can literally just write HTML in this string, or you can just write some text and that will be displayed as well. So I could write the text, you know, hello, this is the main page like that. But I can also add in, you know, stuff like I could add a link, I could add like an H1 tag. So let's actually do that. And I'll show you what that looks like. I'll just put hello in all capitals so we can separate that. And we can add inline HTML when we're returning it from a function. Now, what we need to do next, and this is actually the last step, is define how we can access this specific page. So right now, Flask actually doesn't know where we should be going to get to this page. So we need to give it a root. Now, to do this, we're actually going to decorate this function with app.root. So put the at sign, then app.root. And inside here, we're going to define the path that we want to use to get to this function. So you guys know in the URLs when you have, you know, the whatever the domain name is. So for example, techwithtim.net, and then you say slash and then whatever the pages that you want to go to. In this case, if we put slash, that will mean that whenever we go to our default domain, whatever that might be, it will automatically send us this home page. Although we can also, you know, put something like slash home. And when we do something like that, then that means if we type slash home, we will go to the home page. So in this case, I'm just going to leave it as slash for now. And now I'm going to show you how to run the application and we'll have a look at what we've actually just made. So from our command prompt window or whatever kind of interpreter you want to use to run this, I mean, if you're doing this in IDLE, you can just press F5, but I'm just going to run Python tutorial one dot pi. 
give it a second. Oh, underscore underscore main is not defined. What is this? Oops, I believe this should actually be name up here. My apologies, guys. So up here, this has to say underscore underscore name underscore underscore. Silly mistake. Let me make sure I actually save this uh, and now run that and we should be good to go. Sweet. So now we get this output here. We're saying serving flask app tutorial one lazy loading environment production. Um, and then it's giving us a little warning here saying don't use the development server in a production environment. That's fine. We don't need to worry about that for right now. So what we're going to do is copy the URL that's here. It should be the same for you. So 127.0.0.1 at port 5000. That's just the default port that this runs on. We're going to copy that. We're going to go to a web browser. Then we're going to paste that URL in there and hit enter. Now we get this output that says hello. This is the main page and then we get hello. So you can see that that inline HTML that I wrote here saying, you know, H1 hello actually is working and it's serving us this page that's giving us that kind of output. Just notice though, if I try to go to, you know, slash home, we do get an error. We're saying not found. This is just our default 404, you know, like not found page because we haven't defined a route for where slash home should go. So let me show you a few more things with this routing and then we'll actually kind of end the video there and get into some more stuff. So I want to create another page now. In this case, what I'm going to do is actually define a page uh, and we'll just call this like user or something like that. Now in here, what we're going to do is simply return. And I'm actually going to add a parameter in here called name. We're going to return and I'll just do an F string here. Hello name. And just note, if you're not using Python 3.6, you won't be able to do that, but I'm sure you can figure out how to actually get name in this string. So we'll do hello name. And then what I'm going to do is decorate this again with app.root. And this time I'm going to do something that's a little bit different to show you some cool things that we can do here. If I actually decide to put some things in beside in between tags like this, this means that whenever I type something, it's actually going to grab that value and pass it to my function as a parameter, which means I can do something like name inside of here. And what's actually going to happen is when I type something, I don't have to type name. I can type anything I want. It will pass that string of text to this parameter user. So for this function, and then we'll actually display whatever name it is. I typed in this URL bar as um, our web page and you guys will see how this works. So let's restart this. You can stop this by hitting control C. You might have to hit it a few times. That's usually what happens to me. I'm going to run this now. Give it a second, go back to my web page. And now when I type slash home and refresh, we can see we get hello home. So the basic principle of this is, you know, if you put little tags like this, so the greater than sign and then the less than sign, and you put some variable name inside there, you can actually pass it as a parameter, which allows you to display, you know, different information on the screen or get, for example, maybe a post ID or something like that. All right. So I'm just going to show you guys one last thing, and this is how we can actually redirect different pages from our code. So right now, if we want to get to a different page, what we need to do is type that actual page. But maybe sometimes, you know, a user goes to a page, maybe they're not supposed to be there, they're not authenticated, we need to redirect them. Well, how do we do that? Well, what I'm actually going to start by doing is importing up here called redirect pretty straightforward. And I'm also going to import another function called URL four. Now these two are going to allow me to actually return a redirect from a specific function. So let's do a quick example here. And maybe we have an administrator page that can only be accessed by someone who's signed in and an admin. Well, what I'm going to do is say, you know, app dot root, we'll put a decorator here. We'll just start from the top this time and I'll put slash admin. That's going to be our root. And then here, what I'm going to do is say define admin. I'll just put, uh, they don't need to be anything there. And what I'm going to return is actually a redirect. Now what a redirect does is just redirect you to a different page. So this is pretty easy to do. All you're going to do is literally type redirect once you have it imported and then type URL four. and inside here, you're going to put the name of your function inside of strings. So you might think that it would make sense to do something like slash right as your redirect. But what we actually want to do is put the name of the function that we're going to be redirecting to. So rather than putting something just like slash, which, you know, would usually represent home, we actually need to define the function and put the name of it, which is home. Same thing goes for user. I could put user as well, but actually there might be an issue with user because we don't have a name tag. So I won't talk about that for right now, but I'll just show you that if I do this and I spin my server up again, so Python tutorial one, go here, we'll refresh this page at slash admin. You can see it redirects us directly back to that home page, and we don't ever get anything from the admin page like that. Now this is great because you could technically return different things. Like you could create a variable up here that says, you know, admin, um, actually, well, we'll just call it like a equals false. 
And then you could say something like if a, so if that's true, maybe we return a different response than if, you know, we're not the administrative user. So that's kind of all I'm going to show you guys for right now. I just wanted to give you an idea of how basic this is to actually get something up and running and how you can create, you know, basic kind of user interfaces and web-based stuff with Flask for now. So we've kind of shown, you know, how to redirect, how to get some pages up, how to start the server, how to install Flask. And in the next videos, we'll obviously get into some more complicated things, talk about how to render full HTML templates and how to do some more advanced things like that. If you guys have anything that you specifically want to see for this tutorial, leave a comment down below and I'll try my best to incorporate it into the series. And with that being said, I will see you guys in the next video.